Coach, obviously uh, your last game out, uh, you took on Olivet and uh, had a big win. Uh, maybe talk about the performance uh, of your guys in that game and, and what the attitude has been like since uh, that contest. I think coming after uh, coming back from Christmas break, we we really put in some good practices and uh, we had a lot of negative tests uh, COVID-wise. We were able to get on the floor and uh, put, put in some actual hours together. And then we had that game in there as a test too and uh, performed very well in that game. And Olivet had a few players out as teams do uh, in this season, but it was still good for us to get on the floor. And then obviously Walt had an epic performance, you know, with with 30 at halftime. And I saw you waving to, for me to keep him in there for, for more, but you know, that's that's not what was important at the, at the end of the game, but it, it served us well. And then we just kind of took that and uh, continued to practice really well. And uh, there might be some valid excuses for, for the team. We're not gonna pay attention to those. The bottom line is we hadn't become a good practicing team yet, and uh, we needed to. And we we found that now. We know what it means. And any good team I've been a part of really gets better in practice and and uses that time to you know to perfect their craft. So I like where we're at right now. Hopefully we can get a few more practices together and you know continue to get better. How important was it to get some of those guys back? Some of your leaders like Walt Kelser and Michael Peterson. Yeah, it's 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 very important, you know. But you turn the page quickly to the next guy and the next man up, and that's a cliche in sports. And we try to do that, but um, it's they're irreplaceable. I mean, they've come through the system and they've developed, and it's it's their time. And uh, just things are different when we don't have them. But certainly when we do, um, life is a lot easier. And uh, I never profess to be some uh, you know genius coach. When you got good players and you, you can kind of put them in a spot to make them succeed, they're going to make you look good, and that's what our players do. Coming into the conference season here, uh, maybe what's the approach for you guys to, to be the best you can be and uh, continue to get better and better as the year goes on? Well, first of all, I'm trying not to breathe and fog up my glasses here, but uh, it's hard to do an interview and, and not breathe. Um, yeah, how, how do we get better from here? Where, where do we go from here? Was that the question? I really don't know. It's a day-by-day -day process, and uh, we develop a lot of plans that we scratch and then redo and alter. And for, for, for me, it's just the perspective that we have now is just to take care of our players, take care of them as people, and make sure they're doing okay, and then you know try, try to pursue what we always try to pursue, our full potential. So we're just doing whatever we can, whatever we can each day and every day, COVID willing, to pursue our potential. And um, some days that's nothing, unfortunately. But other, other days you can really put in a good day and you can get better. And uh, we don't really know what it looks like, but we're kind of prepared mentally now to to not know and and still still pursue that uh, you know ultimate goal of being the best we can be. What's the attitude? Maybe uh, your guys been like the demeanor of them as they battle through this, uh, just like everybody else in the country. It's just unbelievable these guys are unbelievable what what they're enduring and just the the life that they're used to and then the life they have now and just even even with academics and online classes and online tutors and i mean it just the the things we ask them to do and sacrifice for a chance to play not even not even a guarantee but you know they're the social distancing the mitigation the the lack of socialness that, that they've had and sacrificed for, for, for the team is incredible. Um, and, and for us all too, we've, we'll, we've all sacrificed things as far as you know, wearing masks everywhere and, and, and we're doing it for what we think are good reasons, not to spread you know, the, the virus to vulnerable populations. And uh, they believe in that, but I'm proud of these guys. They're going through a lot and they're resilient and uh, that, that's good to see, helps me. And finally, uh, here, how important was it to be one of those teams that had a chance to play some non-conference games, one of the only teams in the GLIAC, and, and obviously you played three games, which was the most of, of anyone here in the conference in the non-conference portion of the schedule. Well, I'm taking that as a win in itself. And, uh, you know, I think, I think as a department and as a university, we, again, we, we, we proved how, how much we can do when we put our minds to it. And, uh, you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for anybody, but, you know, we blazed that trail. And I'm as proud of that as, as anything else. And I think you should be too and, and everybody else involved. The fact that we played those three games, regardless of the results, regardless of anything else, the fact that we got on the court when, when it was almost said that we couldn't and we did it and we did it by the book, 
um, that's a big deal. So proud of that, and hopefully we can play a few more games and uh, be proud of those too. Michael, how, how excited are you uh, just to get the conference season uh, going this weekend against Ashland? Yeah, very excited. We haven't played a conference game since March, and uh, we didn't play a whole lot of non-conference games, so we're just really excited to get the season rolling into a rhythm. I know you were coming off an injury, but uh, saw some action against Olived. How, how excited were you just to be back on the floor for that game? And, and obviously a big win for you guys. Yeah, like I said, haven't played since March, so it was really cool. Had to watch the Mercyhurst game, which was a bit of a bummer. But uh, it was a good experience, but we came out against Olived strong, so we're happy to have that experience heading into conference. What's the attitude been like since that Olivet game and uh, getting a chance to be on the practice floor as you get ready for this game? Uh, I'd say more more than the Olivet game, it was just the ability to practice consecutively for about a week straight, which we haven't been able to do for a while. So that, that was probably uh, the most beneficial thing that we've had the last two weeks, was just stringing together practices with a full group. Obviously, uh, you guys have seen Ashland a lot over the years. Uh, how, how, how excited are you to take on them, I guess, uh, being the first weekend here of uh, conference action? Yeah, it's pretty back and forth, at least since I've been here. And uh, it's kind of a contrast of styles, which is kind of cool to play against a different type of team especially a different type of team than ourselves, like we've been practicing against most of the time. So we're just excited to play another blue collar team and they're really good, so we're excited for it. Playing back-to-back -back, uh, days against the same team, you guys experienced that at Mercyhurst. Uh, what's that gonna be like this season as you go through the conference schedule? Uh, it'll be fun. I think back-to-backs will be cool. Uh, it might benefit us, because you know we play a lot of guys, so we're hoping that kind of works to our favor. But uh, it won't be too much different than uh, the Thursday, Saturday. It'll just be maybe a few little adjustments for the Saturday game, but that's about it.